So I grew up in a broken home where my mother raised me Catholic. She brought me to church with my two younger brothers, and we were so obnoxious and loud and distracting in church, and it was just kind of a fun thing for us. And we were looking forward to eat the communion, the, 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 have a little snack in the middle of the one-hour mass uh, as, as a little kid. And so that's, that was motivation to go through the classes so that I can start taking communion, and eventually I did. But one of the things that I picked up is I went to Catholic Church, and I, and I kind of observed my mother's uh, expression of faith was was just a respect for God. I had this reverence for God. Uh, I remember driving um, by a Catholic church as a, as a youngster when I was doing a lot of bad stuff as a teenager, actually. And I would stop and turn down my gangster rap music, and I do I would do one of these in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit out of out of respect and reverence for God. So I had this little bit of reverence for God, and I knew about God. I had some religion. But I didn't have a relationship with God. I didn't know Him personally. I wasn't saved. I wasn't born again. I wasn't walking with Jesus in a saving relationship. When I was seven years old, my mom and dad split up. My father was an alcoholic. And I grew up and, and uh, there was a lot of drug use and there was pot smoke and I would get secondhand high. And, and I remember when I was 13 years old, my 10-year-old brother was hit by a car, and he died. He was killed. And my mother got deeper into to drugs after that. We were both using drugs at this point. And, and it just seemed like our lives just started going down, down, and down, worse and worse. My mom got, she was hurt and bitter, and I was just numb, just staying, staying numb on drugs and, and, and immoral relationships. And then when I was 14 years old, uh, or 15 years old, my, my father was burnt in a house fire in, in Baytown, right outside of Houston, and he died 45 days later. And I remember the last time that I had seen my dad before he was in the fire, we got in this big conflict, and I remember telling him these very words. And I was reminded of this as I was sitting over, standing over the hospital bed, seeing my father burnt in the, in the burn unit in Houston, I remember telling him, I hate you, I wish you would die, I wish you would burn. Like I spoke these, these verbal curses over my father, I had this hatred in my heart, I had this animosity, this anger, this hurt, and then I'm sitting there and I, and I see him, he, he was trying to save his stepdaughter, the, the way he was burned was, he was trying to save his stepdaughter in a house fire a couple days after Christmas, and everybody got out of the apartment, and, uh, and when he kicked in the door, the backdraft hit him and he died. And so... So my father died, my brother died, my mom was on drugs, and I just didn't have purpose or vision for my life. I was just getting in trouble. I was headed for jail and hell, okay? I didn't know God. Even though I would get down on my knees at night and say, God, forgive me of my sins, right after I just got done doing a whole bunch of bad things throughout the day, I just thought if I just said this little prayer at the end of the day, I got fire insurance and I'll be okay, okay? And so I had this a basic belief in God, a basic reverence for God, but I didn't know him. I didn't really know him. I didn't have a genuine relationship with him. And it wasn't until my mom got arrested in 1998. She got arrested for methamphetamines. She was involved in uh, drug dealing and, and she got arrested and she was in jail. My uncle, who was a Christian, was trying to help her out. And, and he agreed to getting her out of jail. She would go to this residential ministry in East Dallas. And so she agreed and it was there that my mom heard the gospel, and I heard the gospel in a very clear way. The Bible was preached in a very clear way that we could understand it, and it made sense, and we realized we needed this real relationship with Jesus. And it was December 12th, 1998, that I responded to a, an altar call at a youth event, and I had been convicted of my sins, that the things that I was doing I knew were wrong, and I knew that I wasn't right with God based on what God's word said, and I needed to get right. And I went up to the altar with my hands lifted in the air and tears rolling down my cheeks, and I just cried like I've never cried before. I had so much pain, so much hurt stored up in my heart. And in that moment, I was crying tears of pain. They were just gushing out like streams gushing out and I remember the tears changing from pain to joy 
And I just, I started crying with joy. It was like God was accepting me, forgiving me right there. I was repenting and putting my trust in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord of my life. And he took my broken life and he washed away my sins and he set me free. And I ex experienced something better than any drug or any immoral relationship had to offer any pleasure of this life had to offer i had experienced the joy of knowing jesus the joy of having my sins forgiven the joy of being brought into fellowship with the living god and it changed my life and you could see a night and day difference because i was living in darkness and then god saved me and i was started living in the light and i started just boldly talking about jesus freely talking about Jesus that very night, December 12th, 1998. And I haven't stopped talking about Jesus since I've been a Christian. And I don't plan to stop talking about Jesus until I breathe my last breath. And I'm up here right now because I love talking about Jesus. And I want others to know Jesus too. I want others to experience the forgiveness and the mercy and the grace that Jesus Christ offers to anyone who will respond to his invitation. To come to me, he says. I'll give you rest for your souls. It's good news that Jesus died for our sins, was buried and raised from the dead, and that when we respond to that good news of him dying for us, of him conquering the de death, the grave for us, when we respond in faith and receive what he's done, we get the free gift of eternal life. And our lives here will never be the same. Amen? Amen. And so that's my story, my redemption story of how God has graciously rescued me. I went a little longer than five minutes, I think, but, but that's the gist of it. I was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me.